Right then, welcome back. Uh, this is episode two of our Max ECU Series 1 Escort RS Turbo conversion. Uh, so we are now going to pop in our Max ECU. Uh, this one, Ashley has decided we're going to use the Max ECU Sport. This comes with a whole load of extra features. We This is one of my favourite ECUs if we're running like a nice and basic engine. Um, it has more than an FIO uh, and a few extra nice little features as well um, over the other ECUs in the range. Um, don't get me wrong, the other ECUs are epic as well, but this is a, a good all rounder for nice basic engine. So uh, this one has all of the usual Max ECU features, but has the extra benefit of being able to run fly by wire, should actually decide in the future to go by fly by wire. Also Bluetooth, so all of your engine data, everything that you connect in, any IO, um, can all be seen on your Android phone or tablet. Um, great for diagnostics work, and more especially when you've got something that's um, you know, a classic car, you don't want any sort of garish bits and pieces in there, so you can keep the original cluster, uh, you can keep all of your original gauge and all of those bits, but if you do want to go that little bit more in depth, you can just pop your phone out, get your tablet out, leave it in the glove or whatever you want to do, uh, and just connect straight to this ECU and see exactly what's going on. So, let's get this in there. This is the, fly, the flying loom that we supply with the ECU. Uh, we will be building our loom from this, so, We'll get this mounted, get this all the bits and pieces through that we need up in through the fuse box, through the grommet in there, uh, and then we'll start working our way around the wiring loop into the engine bay. So hopefully, nice straightforward job. Um, so one of the first things I need to do is find somewhere nice and safe and sensible and out the way, frankly, to keep the ECU. So um, I've stripped out like bits and pieces out of the dash. Um, We've already got quite a lot going on under here from um, past wiring and looks like there's an older radio install and stuff. So I'm gonna try not to disturb as much as I can. Um, yet, ultimately, if we do find something that's hideous, we'll remove it, of course. Um, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, an aluminium plate to sit up on the side, up inside here, right out of the way of all the other car systems. Um, so first thing I've done basically is just made a piece of cardboard, like a template. Um, so hopefully, um, this will just sit all the way up inside here, out the way, out, out the way of all of the um, air vents and such. Um, so I'll make a nice aluminium plate and we'll mount the ECU here and then like an external new fuse box here just to run like, um, you know, for the new wiring for the pumps and the ECU and stuff. So that's job one. And once we've got that done, we can then mount that in and then we can start running some actual wires in. Okay, so um, cardboard template, just made an aluminium plate just to mount on our ECU. I've used AV mounts here, so it's got some sort of movement there to try and protect it a little bit. Um, I've also put like a dedicated fuse box. This is um, a modular fuse box. Um, we use it quite a lot. It's made by a company called MTA. Um, they're Italian. So we'll be keeping, um, we're putting some extra outputs anyway, driving a couple of extra relays in case um, Ashley wants to do anything else with it. You could drive methanol or you know shift like something you want to do really but once you've got the outputs there and they're already wired so we'll just put, leave a little connector we'll probably mount a connector on here um and then you know the world's your oyster a bit more uh, future proofing so uh, we're going to use the uh the three meter supplied loom that we supply with the ecu so we're going to now put this in here um connect that in um we're going to connect in some of the relays to, from some of the gpo outputs um, on the ECU, um, then we're going to leave maybe a foot or so of, we'll, we'll use some braid, um, like just some PVC braid um, just inside the car, and then that's where it will go back up into the, just up to the bottom of the fuse box where it will exit into the car. So um, that's the next thing I'll be doing. So I'll, I'll get this fuse box wired up so everything's fused, everything's nice, ready to go, the relays are all done, uh, and then we've got some trailing loom which we'll thread up under the car. So we'll get that done now, and then we'll hopefully watch me now then thread it up into the into the vehicle and start building a loom into the vehicle okay that's pretty much this resolved now we're uh, ready to mount it in the car um we've made out our little fuse box so we've got um there's two spare relays which are actually connected to the ecu ready to go they've both got supplies everything's fused correctly um mounted in nice these are um our ignition feed and our fuel pump output they both need to be integrated into the car um We've got um, um, a main battery cable into the engine bay, which will go to a, like a, a fused spur in onto the battery. So we've got our main good um, known supply to it. Um, I've included uh, this end, just the, the, these are left behind the dash. I always use these for our 
can connections and when we're not using any you know when it's not in the car already so we've got a little dtm two pin can which will live up in the dash in case he wants to run any uh can gauges or any other bits of equipment so the little um uh i think the little can checked mfd 15 i think it's called lovely little thing normal little gauge um size but you can look at any information the ecu knows which is quite a lot we've also got like a, a little dt um eight pin connector as well um that's populated with um various inputs and outputs in case he wants to go fly by wire again it's a spare it's also got the taco output a couple of digital wins for in case he wants various um you know maybe a boost switch or any of those things launch control all of those bits and pieces so so yeah we're ready now to go and uh you know I've, as i said i've left i've braided this and we've got some adhes adhesive heat shrink both ends of that so that'll live up in, in inside the car um and then this is to go now into the uh, engine bay out through the fuse box so we're going to lay that into the car now we get this ecu mounted uh, once the ECU is mounted and the cables are out through the fuse box, we can actually start wiring the, the engine bay. So, um, yeah, we're getting there now. So let's go and do that. Okay, so that's our uh, our main loom pulled up through in the same place, the fuse box. Like I say, this will all be wrapped anyway. We can uh, move this around the uh, car properly into the engine bay. And the ECU just sits in up under there. You can just see our, like, uh, our connector and our spare cables there so um hopefully you can see there she is just lives in there very nice out the way all the fuses are obtainable should we need to so yeah i'm happy with that right so um all the loom now is um coming through in the original oem location so now what we need to do is uh you know make sure all of these points go off to the injectors the ignition um you know lambda sensor all of those things boost control so we've got to sort of like basically zip them in round where they should go so what i like to do is i use the um white zip ties for like anything temporary um and anything finished and, and sorted i use black so i'm going to go around now and just zip tie up all the looms together everything in the right place um, and then once i'm really happy with where that should be that's when we can then wrap the loom um, and get that ready to be like so that we can reassemble the vehicle um, i generally have all of my um i have crib sheets for all of these things and i just mark onto the side in an excel spreadsheet where they are um, whether it's 5 volt, 12 volts, you know, all of those things. So um, the crib sheets are available on my website to download should you require. Um, I find them very ge genuinely very helpful. Um, they certainly are for me. So, so yeah, so probably another couple of free hours now just getting this sort of all in the right place. Um, then we can start thinking about wrapping it. So most of our builds of late, we you may have noticed previously that we haven't included the fan relay. Um, that's because most of our builds of late, we use like a, a PWM fan controller. Um, this allows us to control the speed of the fan so we're actually monitoring the engine temperature completely and trying to control that rather than having a reactive system where all of a sudden it's too hot and we're we're then chucking a, a you know a hundred percent of our duty to our fan and the fan's coming on fully and then it's coming down below where we want it to be and we you know so we've got this noise this this sort of big amp current rush into the electronics or the electrics of the vehicle so um 90 percent of the time now we use a pwm controller um, this is an OEM one. Uh, this is fitted to um, lots of Fords, um, you know, uh, loads of Volvos, Jaguars. Um, it's a nice, like, cost-effective unit. This one is a twin fan one, which is what we're going to use on this Escort. So, um, as I say, these are cost-effective solutions for this, this, you know, for what we're trying to do with these fans. So, um, I'll, sh I'll show you how we run it. We run it from the Max ECU, of course. The Max ECU. Um, can just control this natively, no problem at all, just with a PWM circuit for one of our GPO outs. Um, all we literally need to do is give this um, a good volt, uh, you know, a good supply, um, and our two fan outputs. And as I say, our PWM voltage allows us to, our PWM control allows us to adjust the voltage or the, the PWM to these so we can drive the fans from anything from zero to 100%. So um, I sell these connectors on the website, so if you, if you look again on PV Engineering, .co.uk if you want to find these connectors we sell them just as a pack um, the three connectors for these these you can buy um, off eBay or from your local factors they range like a cheap one from you can pick them up I've seen them for like 20 quid brand new I imagine they won't last that long but hey I've never tried one um, to like a better quality one like hella do them as well I think they're about like 50 quid um, but yeah we, we, we'll mount this somewhere near the fan this is to say we're going to use this I'll, I'll show you how it works in a moment but but yeah we, we use these lots and and you know we've used them um, they've been on vehicles we've sort of set out for you know years and, and been absolutely fine so so yeah um, 
I'll connect this up just, you know, just I won't use the, the, the proper connectors at this point because I don't want to ruin the pins, um, but we'll just use some spade connectors. I'll push them on and I'll show you roughly how you can make this work. But but yeah, like these are these are good little solutions to, you know, what we're trying to do and makes uh, makes for a nicer job as well, I think. Right, so I've connected up um, just using like some crop clips and some little push fit um, spade connectors this module just so that I can show you what we're gonna how we're gonna make it work. Um, I've got like just my bench max ECU here. Um, I power this just from this little thing here, but I've got like a bench supply over here which is 20 amps. So we've got more than enough power to supply what we're trying to do at the moment. So um, I'll move over to the laptop. I'll fire up the ECU, power on. Um, so there we go. So hopefully you can see the screen of the laptop now. You can see it's got some errors. That'll be um, Lambda and such like um, because there's nothing connected to this poor ECU. So um, output configuration. All I've done is set a, a user PWM1. In this case, it's the cooling fan. I just labeled it. And it brings up this little PWM here. And then this is essentially how I've set this up. So um, you can see... Um, I've set the frequency at 120 hertz. That's these just work fine with that frequency, so that's fine. And then this, these numbers here are just the the duty cycle of the PWM. Um, in this case, it's just a um, it's just a table I brought over from something else that had air conditioning. But you can see when the air conditioning is active, it adds in more PWM to the fan, so that the fans run to cool the condenser. Um, in this case, we won't. I'll, I'll leave it there, but we won't even need it. But you can see it's at zero percent all the way up through, and then we start to get to 70, and then it will soft start. Bring the fans on nice and slowly until you know at 100 we're at 100. But what you gen tend to find is it generally sits around essentially, you know, just after where the thermostat opens, which is just what we want. But I'll show you what I mean now. I'll just fire the fan up here. I'll just highlight these two boxes here, and we'll just add in a bit of duty cycle, um, and then eventually you'll hear the fans start to kick in. Now they've soft started. Now they're running really gently, really quietly, and then we can ramp them up. We'll pump in like sort of 30 percent duty. And you hear that they're starting to come up and again we can ramp them all the way up as much as we want until you can barely hear me um, so yeah what you'll tend to find is is that this will sort of you know we can maintain the temperature of the engine um, with none of the sort of on off so again like it's a bit of noise as well you lose you know when we want to we want to hear our engines don't we most of the time so um, these will just generally tend to sit you know I, I tend to find they'll sit like 40 45 percent um, you know until you start the move but but you have got that, you know, they can bang in 100% should you require. Um, but there's not really any downsides to them as far as I come across these, you know. Um, they don't tend to break as much as relays, especially with high current relays, um, like we're using with fans, lots of inrush. So, yeah, like, we use them all the time. Great bit of kit, and that's what we're going to use on this Escort. So we're going to bolt this one in just in by the inner wing, um, and then this will control the fans, so we don't need any high power... Um, circuits from our relay box inside we can literally just run like a fuse supply from the battery to this um, and then the ECU will look after it natively so we'll rewire these because they, these were randomly um, connected to the wiring for the um, spotlights on the front of the car so we've got to redo all of that anyway so as far as I'm concerned this is a massive massive improvement for this car so yeah let's go and get that resolved Right, so I've bundled all my um, offside cabling together. Um, it's worth at this point, like we basically um, some of the original loom. We're still using the original gauges, of course. Um, so I've discovered, like after doing some um, resistive tests, that the coolant temperature wire was knackered. So no good. So it's worth doing these things if you're playing with a classic car, especially the time you've loomed this up. It's going to be a right pain in the ass to get it back out. So um, a couple of the original wires, as I say, that the alternator one was already just joined in five or six places so we've replaced that back um, and now we've had to replace the the coolant temperature sensor wiring to the original dash box we keep um, various different types of automotive cable of course this one happens to be red with a white trace just happened to have that so happy days we put that in as in um, you know so it's OEM um, so that's this side done and um, the other thing I've done is just pulled in um, a few extra cables we've just got um, a 1.5 mil squared and 2.75s um, we'll just put a little three pin connector down here just out of the way so uh, again if Ashley wants to add anything in the future or even a future owner there'll be a little connector under the dash um, under the fuse box and then a little connector down here we'll obviously note it down so that he she can add whatever they want in at a later date without having to sort of add in extra cabling around the engine bay just to keep it that a little bit nicer so um, 
this bit is now done. Um, we've got some new connectors on the way um, for all the headlights and such like. So um, this is ready for wrapping now. I'm going to do this piece here now, which has the majority of our actual um, injection loom. Um, again, we'll keep it as original, follow along the top, incorporate the original loom also. So we've got our, um, our blower fan, our wipers, a few other little bits and pieces around here. Um, and then we'll get that sort of poked in around under the engine and then we can we can wrap all that nicely um, and then we start thinking about reassembling the car. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up um, this video here. I've basically um, wrapped this side. I did end up pulling um, a few more cables back round to the main part of the loom along the bulkhead. Um, one being the, um, the washer bottle um, because the washer bottle was there. Normally it would be at the front here and I think it would just look, look a bit neater to come round um, with the rest of the wiring for the ignition coil and such like just just around that way so it'll keep a cleaner engine bay so I've pulled that back round and fed it in that way but all this is loom taped up now we use like a we're using like a, a non-adhesive loom tape on this which is kind of how they would have been um, but yeah all of this is now done we've left some tails on um, longer than I need so that I can sort of um, Put the connectors on the ends here and we've got to sort of sort this out here as i say i've got all new connectors for the headlights but um i kind of want to now as i say just finish up this video because i'm going to finish up that bit in the next one because i realize that this video has probably gone on and on so um yeah we're pretty much in the next one we'll be finishing that up um hopefully getting it started uh, and hopefully we'll throw it on the dyno um so yeah uh, thanks for watching i hope it's been of some use to you um and yeah i'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.